You guys should know something big is going on if I had to drop what I was doing to come make this video. Do you want to know what I was doing that I stopped doing to come make this video so I could put out timely, relevant content? I had to stop watching Szwinka Peppa po Polsku. That's right, I was watching Peppa Pig in Polish. That's my new thing, is I'm watching shows aimed at tiny babies in languages that are not my native language of English because that's going to help me understand new languages. The more I listen to that and Sesame Street, where it's singing the little song that's like, la la. La la la, el mashviat. So the longer it does that, I'm gonna Polish is gonna sound right to me. So that's what I've been doing. But I stopped doing that because today's video topic is more important, and that is because Elon Musk, one of the biggest names in business of all time, is getting sued for potentially running a pyramid scheme. Hit you some nuts. There was lots of memes going around. around. I'm a human. You guys um, asked for it. Hey, what's up my fellow small business supporters? I'm Savvy, welcome back to Savvy Writes Books, the channel where we talk about books and business, where today I've just got some news to give you guys. Keep in mind as I go through this video that everything I'm going to talk about is alleged. This is all allegedly. All I'm talking about is what's being reported and the allegations that are currently happening. I am not going to say definitively whether or not Elon Musk is running a pyramid scheme or has run a pyramid scheme or was involved in pyramid scheme activity. I will not be sharing my opinion on that as I am not a lawyer and this is all still going on, but I wanted to talk about it because you can't just not talk about this. Anyway, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. Every Friday at 11 a.m. Central, I put out new videos about books and business, and I also do it multiple other times throughout the week when there's some interesting news going on, like there is today. Today's video is not sponsored, but it was brought to you by my Patreon supporters. Thank you so much to everyone who's joined my Patreon. Guys, the Patreon Discord has been ramping up lately, and we've been having a lot of really interesting conversations there, so it's been a good time. Also, don't forget to check out the description below to see my Patreon supporters who give $5 a month and up where they can link their own small businesses, causes, social media pages, whatever they like. So check them out as well. I'm not gonna spill this hot coffee. So a couple weeks ago on my second channel called Your Morning Guru, which is also linked in the description below, we followed Elon Musk for a week. That's what we do. Every week we follow a different business guru, self-help guru, whatever for a week on that show. We followed Elon Musk a couple weeks ago. And while we did that, we talked all about, you know, his, his start, how he got into business in the first place, what some of the different theories are on his origin story, some of the controversies he's been involved in, just a ton of different stuff about him. And then it seems like right after we finished covering him, a whole bunch of shit came out, including a couple articles about a potential lawsuit that he could be having related to a pyramid scheme related to the cryptocurrency Dogecoin. So we're going to be talking about that. And then also a recent issue he had with a variety of SpaceX employees and what that might mean for the implications of him as a boss and an employer. So let's talk about it. As you guys know, it is June. It is Pride Month. We are talking about LGBTQ related topics. LGBTQ stands for LuLaRoe, Girl Boss, Boss Babe, Tupperware, and cryptocurrency. And because of that, we just talked about Boss Babe this past Friday. We talked about the girls from Girl Defined becoming girl bosses. And today we are going to talk about Elon Musk's ventures with cryptocurrency. Now let's talk about what trouble Elon Musk has landed himself into recently. Vita, ya yes dem shvinka peppa. La 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 la, el mashviat, el mashviat. We've got this article over here from Al Jazeera called Elon Musk and Tesla sued over Dogecoin pyramid scheme. Plaintiff accuses Tesla CEO of manipulating cryptocurrency for profit, exposure, and amusement. Manipulating cryptocurrency for fun and profit. Let's see what happened. This article came out on June 17th, 2022. At the moment, I'm filming June 18th, and I imagine this video is going to go up on June 20th, so this is going to be just a couple days. Maybe some new developments will come out in that time. I'll do an update if so. Elon Musk was sued for $258 billion on Thursday by a Dogecoin investor who accused him of running a pyramid scheme to support the cryptocurrency. Now, guys, on Your Morning Guru, we also did a week on cryptocurrency, and while cryptocurrency itself is not a pyramid scheme, it very easily can lead into them when you get into certain things like some NFTs. NFTs, right? Where people buy NFTs under the assumption that the real value of the NFT is not the art or you wanting the art or you wanting to have ownership of that digital string of code, that copy of it, right? But wanting to have resale value on it so it relies on you having to then continue propagating, right? Uh, there's a fantastic video called Line Go Up by Folding Ideas that I highly recommend everyone watch if you want to see where some of the parallels between MLMs and pyramid schemes and the crypto and NFT 
world kind of come into play. However, cryptocurrency as a concept on its own is a currency. It's not a pyramid scheme, but it can it can lead into some very uh, ethically suspicious areas. So you got to be careful, just like with anything finance related, right? In a complaint filed in federal court in Manhattan, plaintiff Keith Johnson accused Musk, electric car company Tesla Inc. and space tourism company SpaceX of racketeering for touting Dogecoin and driving up its price only to then let the price tumble. Oof. I'm, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not going to say what he did or did not do or what he is or is not guilty of, but I will say this, this is, if this is true, it's sounding sus. Defendants were aware since 2019 that Dogecoin had no value yet promoted Dogecoin to profit from its trading, the complaint said. Musk used his pedestal as world's richest man to operate and manipulate the Dogecoin pyramid scheme for profit, exposure, and amusement. I can't get over that. He manipulated, your honor, he manipulated the cryptocurrency for fun and profit. I don't know why that's so funny to me. What actually happened if people did get screwed out of tons of money? It's not funny. Just the phrasing is funny. The complaint also aggregates comments from Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, and others questioning the value of cryptocurrency. Tesla, SpaceX, and the lawyer for Musk did not immediately respond to requests for comment. A lawyer for Johnson did not immediately respond to requests for comment on one specific evidence his client has or expects to have that proves Dogecoin is worthless and the defendants ran a pyramid scheme. Johnson is seeking damages worth triple the $86 billion decline in Dogecoin's market value since May 2021. He also wants to block Musk and his companies from promoting Dogecoin and a judge to declare that trading Dogecoin is gambling under federal and New York law. This is is interesting. This is interesting. So I am not a cryptocurrency expert whatsoever. So I am not going to give definitive opinions either way on whether cryptocurrency is or is not gambling. I think there are lots of things in terms of the way that people trade money with each other that could ride the cusp of what is gambling and what is genuine, honest trade. But unless we want to tear down the entire system, which like, in some cases, yeah, maybe, maybe not. Unless we want to, you know, tear down the entire system and not have publicly traded companies and things like that anymore, to an extent, there's always going to be a little bit of gambling. But if what this guy is alleging is true and Elon Musk did actually go ahead to drive up the price of Dogecoin and then let it drop for the sake of, you know, his own manipulation, I, I, I think that that's uh, unethical. I think that's unethical. I'd love to know more about the specifics of why he thinks it's a pyramid scheme and what evidence he has of that, because I would love to be able to comment on that. I'm wondering, I'm going to take a look and see if any new things have come out since then. The complaint said Dogecoin sell-off began around the time Musk hosted the NBC show Saturday Night Live and playing a fictitious financial expert on Weekend Update segment called Dogecoin a hustle. Tesla in February 2021 said it had bought $1.5 billion of Bitcoin and for a short time accepted it as a payment for vehicles. I mean, if cryptocurrency wants to be a currency, right? It has to be tradable for goods and services for it to be a currency. That's that's what I consider a currency. So if Tesla was taking Bitcoin as payment for the cars, then I guess that makes it currency. Dogecoin traded at about 5.8 cents on Thursday, down from its May 2021 peak of about 74 cents. Yeah, that's a huge drop. We also have a Forbes article we can look at as well. Let's see if there's any different information in here. Elon Musk suddenly hit with huge $258 billion crypto pyramid scheme lawsuit over Dogecoin amid a devastating Bitcoin and Ethereum price crash. So as you guys know, I don't know if you've been hearing this, but if you follow cryptocurrency, a lot of it's not doing super great right now. Tesla billionaire Elon Musk, who has the power to create and destroy billions of dollars worth of Bitcoin and crypto value with just a tweet, has helped the meme-based Dogecoin become a top 10 cryptocurrency over the last 18 months, just weeks ago revealing one reason he thinks people love Dogecoin. However, the Dogecoin price has crashed over the last few months, losing more than 90% of its value since hitting an all-time high in May of last year and dropping along with the price of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and the wider crypto market. Now, as Bitcoin and Ethereum teeter on the brink of disaster, Musk and his companies Tesla and SpaceX have been hit with a $258 billion lawsuit claiming that they're a part of a racketeering scheme to pump the Dogecoin price. Musk, Tesla, and SpaceX falsely and deceptively claim that Dogecoin is a legitimate investment when it has no value at all. Keith Johnson described as an American citizen who was defrauded out of money by the defendant's Dogecoin crypto pyramid scheme, wrote in the complaint. Johnson, who filed the lawsuit in New York, is seeking class action status for the suit and aims to represent other allegedly harmed investors. He's asking for $86 billion in damages, along with triple damages of $172 billion, as well as an order blocking Musk, Tesla, and SpaceX from promoting Dogecoin. Dogecoin is simply a fraud whereby greater fools are deceived into buying the coin at a higher price, the lawsuit read before going on to list Musk's multiple tweets and public statements that have pushed up the Dogecoin price over the last 18 months. Musk, who was voted Dogecoin CEO in a joke Twitter poll in 2019 and adopted the moniker The Doge Father, 
That's kind of funny, because it's like, you know, there's the Godfather, you flip that backwards, you get the Dogfather, which was a shitty parody movie of the Godfather starring Chris Parnell. Don't watch it. The Doge Father, I could see it. Has been a fan of the tongue-in-cheek Bitcoin rival for years, naming Dogecoin as his favorite cryptocurrency. Musk has previously said he personally owns Dogecoin, along with Bitcoin and Ethereum. In early 2021, Musk sent the Bitcoin price sharply higher when it was revealed Tesla had bought $1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin. Later, as a Bitcoin, Ethereum, and broad cryptocurrency bull run pushed prices to blistering highs, Musk repeatedly called on Dogecoin developers to upgrade the cryptocurrency in order to beat Bitcoin hands down. So this is a graph of what's been happening with Dogecoin. boop a doop boop 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 That's basically what happened. I my little song is what happened. The Dogecoin price peaked ahead of Musk's hotly anticipated appearance on the comedy sketch show Saturday Night Live and has since lost 93% of its value. Since then, Musk has rolled out Tesla and SpaceX support for Dogecoin payments, allowing customers to buy merchandise in Dogecoin. Tesla last year briefly began accepting Bitcoin for car purchases, but Musk pulled the plug just two months later. Blaming Bitcoin's high demands and carbon footprint, Musk went on to say Tesla would most likely restart accepting Bitcoin, though it hasn't done so yet. That is an interesting way to look at this, right? That one of the benefits of Tesla as a car company that people bring up is that Tesla cars are electric and they're better for the environment because of that. But when you look at some of the environmental impacts that cryptocurrency is having, and that's one of the reasons a lot of people aren't supporting cryptocurrency is that, you know, in order to mine the coins, there you have to set up basically these huge servers that run a lot of power, use a ton of energy and things like that. So a lot of people are worried about whether cryptocurrency is going to contribute to negative impacts on the environment, which would kind of go against what one of the main selling points of Tesla is. So I can see where that would kind of not work together very well. All right, we've got the complaint itself, the lawsuit. Let's take a look. Again, I am not a lawyer. I'm just interested in what's going on. Okay, class action complaint. Defendants Elon Musk, SpaceX, and Tesla are engaged in a crypto pyramid scheme, aka Ponzi scheme, by way of Dogecoin cryptocurrency. All right, so this guy who's filing the complaint actually did use the term pyramid scheme, and he referred to it as a Ponzi scheme. Sometimes when uh, media sources, including some of us on YouTube, report on things, we'll use the word pyramid scheme in a more colloquial way, rather than trying to say that something fits the legal definition of a pyramid scheme. And I think what a pyramid scheme means in everyday conversation absolutely includes the majority of MLM direct sales uh, network marketing type of companies, but some of them don't fit the, the legal definition, right? And a lot of people are trying to, you know, petition the FTC to get that changed so that they do fit the legal definition because these companies are very predatory on a ton of people. But I just wanted to point out that, yes, it's in there in the lawsuit. It seems that the plaintiff is asserting that they are running a, a pyramid scheme by legal definition. Dogecoin is not a currency, stock, or security. It's not backed by gold or other precious metal or anything at all. You can't eat it, grow it, or wear it. I just think that's funny. I'm <laughs> sorry. Dogecoin does not generate cash flow. It doesn't pay interest or a dividend. It has no unique utility compared to other cryptocurrencies. It's not part of a new internet or the metaverse. It's not based upon or tied to anything of value. It's not secured by a government or private entity. This all leads into like just all of this together. And I'm not a fine, again, I'm not a finance expert, but it leads me into this, this like philosophical mindset of like, you know, what is currency? What, where's the line where something becomes currency? And I'm sure there's, you know, legal ways to think about it. There's financial ways to think about it. I, it. It's definitely taking us into thinking about things in a new way and reframing a lot of things because it does say in here, you know, it's not backed by gold or another metal. And, you know, the US dollar hasn't been backed by gold in a very long time. So that alone does not mean that something's not a valid currency. In my personal opinion, what makes a currency real is whether you can trade it for goods and services. So by way of that, you could make almost anything into a currency if someone else is willing to accept it in exchange for something. You know, there are economies where people barter with things. I guess this is, is trying to say here, you know, the number of coins is unlimited. It's simply a fraud whereby greater fools are deceived into buying the coin at a higher price. Since defendant Musk and his corporation, SpaceX and Tesla began purchasing, developing, promoting, supporting, and operating Dogecoin in 2019, plaintiff and the class have lost approximately $86 billion in this crypto pyramid scheme. I'd like to see the breakdown of pyramid scheme to Dogecoin comparison. I think that would be really interesting. I bet it's in here somewhere. Okay, so I think this is where it's kind of getting into the specific allegations. It says here, 
Uh, Elon Musk as, is the CEO of Defendant SpaceX and Tesla, who jointly promote Dogecoin. SpaceX has named a satellite after Dogecoin, and Tesla accepts Dogecoin for merchandise, which, you know, if Tesla is accepting Dogecoin, that would make Dogecoin a valid currency in that way, in my opinion. Again, I, I don't have any legal expertise on this. I'm just kind of thinking through this logically. Over the last three years, Defendant Musk individually and in his position as president of SpaceX and Tesla garnered the support of celebrities, influencers, and billionaire investors, along with thousands of TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, Facebook and Instagram followers, owners, and supporters of Dogecoin to boast the price, trading volume, and market cap of Dogecoin. Then it talks about a bunch of people who were involved with this, who are also rich. I like that. I like how we're in an era now where some evidence that people use in like official lawsuit filings will say things like Musk posted Dogecoin rules on April 2nd, 2019 together with a dog smoking a cigarette and the caption Doge. I haven't heard that name in years. I love how like talking about people's meme tweets is now part of a lawsuit, which I guess it's been that way for a while, but it's, it's a strange world we're living in. It's also going to be interesting to see if they can prove, you know, Again, I'm not a lawyer, but I'm wondering if they're gonna have to prove, like, was he joking in this case? And would people believe this? Was he giving investment advice? Like, I don't know where the lines are for these things. I'm, you know, I, I hope that if this goes to trial, that it's one of those trials they broadcast, because I want to follow this. A lot of trials that have been broadcasted I haven't been following because they have to do with, like, death and abuse and, like, stuff that just is, like, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't take that toll on my mental health, right? But this, I would watch the shit out of this. Defendant Musk's tweet on July 17th, 2020 was enough to send Dogecoin's price up from 0.0029 to... 0.0036, an increase of nearly 25% in only two days, increasing the market cap from 363 million to 452 million. So basically this evidence here looks like it's trying to show that every time Elon Musk has tweeted about Dogecoin, it's helped increase the value because it's bringing awareness to it and more people are wanting to invest in Dogecoin. On January 13th, 2021, Musk tweeted, Tesla merch buyable with Dogecoin, which caused the market cap of Dogecoin to increase from 1 billion to 1.3 billion in less than 48 hours. Isn't it wild how rich people just have this much influence. It's just like blowing my mind. It talks more about just kind of all the ways that um, Elon Musk kept promoting Dogecoin and how basically every time he tweeted or released a video or did anything promoting Dogecoin, the market cap increased and increased more and increased more and just kept increasing. So I think that's what this is trying to prove here. So then we get to the Saturday Night Live stuff, which I think is a big part of it, according to what the news articles say this guy is asserting. It says, Defendant Musk appeared on Saturday Night Live on May 9th, 2021, during a sketch, Defendant Musk appeared as a fictional financial expert called Lloyd Ostertag, where he again referred to himself as the Doge Father. I haven't watched Saturday Night Live in forever. From what I heard, Elon Musk wasn't that funny, which makes sense because he's not an actor. I don't know. I wonder what that was like. Let me know in the comments below if you watched it and what you thought. Defendant Musk stated, among other things, that it's the future of currency before agreeing that Dogecoin is a hustle. Defendant Musk's appearance on Saturday Night Live reflected negatively on Dogecoin for multiple reasons, causing the trading volume to skyrocket and the price to plummet. So this is interesting. Is this saying here that, like, because he did such a shit job on Saturday Night Live, people suddenly thought Dogecoin was cringe and got rid of it? Is that what's happening here? Am I interpreting that right? Uh, lawyers in the comments below, let me know if I'm interpreting that right. Within four days, the Dogecoin market cap dropped from $95 billion to $45 billion, nearly 50%, and the price dropped from $0.73 cents to $0.38. Cents. Oh my god, within four days? I love- dude, this is just so ridiculous. Elon Musk is so ridiculous on Twitter, which to be fair, I'm also ridiculous on Twitter, but I'm also not a billionaire or the CEO of some of these massive companies, or, or, or do I have that much financial influence on the world, thankfully, because this dude is- he's just wild on Twitter. Like, on July 1st, 2021, Elon Musk tweeted, baby doge do 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 <laughs> On, Jul on July 2nd, 2011, Defendant Musk tweeted, a is that supposed to be 2021? Is that a typo? Because why are they talking about what he did 10 years earlier? I'm assuming this is supposed to be 2021. He tweeted a meme with three young, beautiful women surrounding a smiling young man on a laptop with the words Dogecoin Polytopia above a graph depicting an increasing price, causing the price to rise to 25 cents. So is this lawsuit just basically, did Elon Musk meme his way into a pyramid scheme? A pyramid meme really makes you think. Gets the noggin joggin', doesn't it? A pyramid meme. <laughs> so this is just going over every tweet and what the impact on the Dogecoin value was after each tweet. 
So they're asserting that every statement and endorsement from defendants on social media regarding Dogecoin has knowingly caused millions of people to spend billions of dollars buying into the Dogecoin crypto pyramid scheme. The ripple effect of the defendant's conduct regarding Dogecoin caused the entire crypto market cap to increase to $3 trillion in the summer of 2021. Since that time, nearly $2 trillion has been lost in the crypto marketplace as the entire crypto market cap is presently close to $1 trillion, crashing after defendant Musk told the world on Saturday Night Live that crypto was a hustle. What I don't get is like, are they trying to claim that people took Elon Musk seriously on Saturday Night Live and like didn't gather that he was playing a fictional character? Are they asserting that Elon Musk by just like being cringe caused people to not like him and therefore not like Dogecoin? I'm trying to see what the connection is specifically here, but I am not qualified to interpret this document just to read it and laugh at baby Doge do 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 do. So here we go. Dogecoin is a crypto pyramid scheme. I'm, I'm really excited to read this and see what they have to say. New York Attorney General Letitia James describes a pyramid scheme as a fraudulent system of making money based on recruiting an ever-increasing number of, a quote, investors. I would agree with that definition. Dogecoin is a crypto pyramid scheme because A, it has no intrinsic value, B, it is not a productive asset, C, it has no underlying value, D, the number of coins is unlimited, E, the value of Dogecoin is solely derived from the hope that the price will rise indefinitely under the greater fool theory, and F, the history of trading proves that the price is directly controlled and manipulated by defendants. Do you think that this is enough to make it a pyramid scheme or to prove that it's a pyramid scheme? Because I could see both pros and cons in this situation. Like, for example, saying, you know, it has no underlying value. I don't know how that's necessarily different than any other currency, because the value of currency is what the market values it at. It's like what people are willing to spend it on. Like, what is $1 worth? $1 is worth $1. A dollar is going to go a lot farther for you in, you know, rural Montana than it is in San Francisco. And so does that dollar have intrinsic value? It's going to vary. And then we have things like inflation that happen, especially there's been a lot of inflation happening a lot lately. So I, I can't say necessarily that having no intrinsic value I don't know what that refers to in a legal sense, but in from a layman's perspective, I don't think that that's necessarily a red flag for something being a pyramid scheme, unless we want to say, you know, that the entire system of investing is a pyramid scheme, which would be a pretty big claim to make. I'm not saying you can't make it, you just gotta back it up. Girl, back that statement up. Back that statement up with facts and logic and that fat ass. LGBTQ cryptocurrency. So then it talks about how, you know, some big names in being financial experts, some fellow rich people like Bill Gates and Warren Buffett also thought that uh, Dogecoin was a scam. Wolf of Wall Street Jordan Belfort recently stated that Bitcoin and crypto is a scam and that Dogecoin is a joke with no real value. I get that they're trying to just include a bunch of different people's assertions about this to show that a bunch of people who are in the financial sphere say this, but I don't know if Jordan Belfort's the most credible source considering you know, his past and what he did and his own ventures into being a scam. So I find this endlessly fascinating. I really am curious to know your guys' thoughts on all of this in the comments below. It's a little bit outside of my area of expertise, but I'm just so fascinated by it. I wanted to talk about it. I also do want to talk a little bit about the controversy that Elon Musk recently got into with SpaceX. So when we covered Elon Musk on Your Morning Guru, we talked about a few of the allegations of him being a bad boss, one of them being some complaints that were filed about managers, I believe at Tesla, being a allowed to get away with showing racist behavior or saying racial slurs and just overall creating a hostile work environment specifically for people of color. And I think specifically for black employees. And that was bad, obviously. So we got into this whole discussion of is Elon Musk a bad boss? Is he bad to his employees? Does he need to treat his employees better? Well, very recently, another thing came out where SpaceX, um, a bunch of employees decided to publicly call out Elon Musk and he fired a bunch of people. Now, I'm not going to share my opinion until we have read this article and gone through it, so let's talk. In an email, Gwyn shot while SpaceX's president said the letter had made other employees feel uncomfortable, intimidated, and bullied. Let's see what the letter had to say. So this is an article from the New York Times. This is written by Ryan Mack. SpaceX, the private rocket company, 
on Thursday fired employees who helped write and distribute an open letter criticizing the behavior of its chief executive, Elon Musk, said three employees with knowledge of the situation. Some SpaceX employees began circulating the letter, which denounced Mr. Musk's activity on Twitter on Wednesday. The letter called the billionaire's public behavior and tweeting a frequent source of distraction and embarrassment and asked the company to rein him in. Mr. Musk is currently closing a $44 billion deal to buy Twitter. Now, a few years ago, I was a fan of Elon Musk. I used to think it was really cool how he was very, he seemed very innovative. He seemed to really uh, want to just dive into new ventures. And I've always, I've always had a little bit of the serial entrepreneur millennial syndrome. Someone like Elon Musk, I would always look at and be like, ooh, he really just does follow it. He has the resources and the money to do that. That's kind of cool. But I will say the way that he's been behaving on Twitter, specifically in a lot of the very mean things he's been saying to other people, my opinion of him has been plummeting over the past, I want to say, couple years. We talked about some of his Twitter controversies when we followed him on Your Morning Guru. Uh, kind of started with when there was that whole controversy with a bunch of kids being trapped in a cave, and he wanted to create something to try to help them get out and one of the guys who was involved with the rescue mission was like, that's actually not going to be helpful, don't bother. And Elon Musk then called him a a word for what what you do when you do things to kids that you shouldn't do to kids. That's, that, that's what he called him. And it's like, why did you call him that, bud? So I think Elon Musk has been, ever since then, I started noticing more and more his behavior online getting worse and worse. And like, I'm not here to say that you have to be professional online 100% of the time. Like, I'm a fucking meme lord online. I'm gonna make a video for this Friday about how I've been being a boss babe parody character online for the past couple weeks because I think that's funny. I like to spread the memes. But I think there's a line. I think there's a point at which your attention-seeking behavior is making other people miserable, making other people feel unsafe, and you have to figure out where that balance is. If you're gonna be a CEO of a big company, especially in Elon's case of multiple big companies, you're considered a leader. You're someone that people look up to. And if you're going to be in that leadership position, you have to be a little more responsible with your platform knowing how many people it's gonna reach. But then again, I'm not the Twitter police, so let's see what is going on here. By Thursday afternoon, SpaceX had fired some of the letter's organizers, according to the three employees and an email from Gwen Shotwell, SpaceX's president and chief operating officer. In her email, which was obtained by the New York Times, she said the company had investigated and terminated a number of employees involved with the letter. The letter solicitations and general process made employees feel uncomfortable, intimidated, and bullied and or angry because the letter pressured them to sign onto something that did not reflect their views, Ms. Shotwell wrote. We have too much critical work to accomplish and no need for this kind of overreaching activism. Maybe I'm misinterpreting her quote, but that sounds dystopian as shit. We have no time for activism. We have work to do. Get back to your workstation. There's no time to care about moral and ethical issues of your work environment. This like gives anti-union vibes. I'm not sure though. Again, I need, to, I need more information. It was unclear how many employees had been fired. James Gleason, a SpaceX spokesman, did not immediately return a request for comment. The open letter followed recently publicized accusations of, uh, don't wanna get demonetized. Elon Musk was recently accused of doing the thing where, here, I'll just highlight it on the screen. Harassment of the variety that involves non-consensual physical things. So he recently had an accusation of that, right? Which uh, we did go over on the live stream and it was, it was weird. Basically, from what I read, he whipped it out on a plane and showed it to the flight attendant and then offered to buy her a horse. Where did the horse come into play? Whatever happened to the horse? Like this whole story is just wild. Like, is Elon Musk okay? That's, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of worried. Is he okay? A lot of the stuff he's doing is incredibly erratic. Like, is he okay? In May, Insider reported that a flight attendant had said that Mr. Musk propositioned her for a massage with a happy ending during a flight to London in 2016. The flight attendant said he had also exposed himself to her and offered her a horse. Okay, so it is gonna talk about the horse here. Elon Musk did deny these allegations and said that no, that never happened. So did they happen or not? I don't fucking know. I can't read minds. At SpaceX, Mr. Musk is rarely challenged by his own workers, said the three employees who spoke on the condition of anonymity. He notified the company's workers via email this month that they must spend at least 40 hours in the office or face firing. The open letter asks that SpaceX's leaders publicly address and condemn Elon's harmful Twitter behavior and define and uniformly respond to all forms of unacceptable behavior. In her email to staff, Ms. Shotwell wrote, blanketing thousands of people across the company with repeated unsolicited emails and asking them to sign letters and fill out 
unsponsored surveys during the workday is not acceptable. Please stay focused on the SpaceX mission and use your time to do your best work. She continued, this is how we will get to Mars. Maybe I'm just a softie. Maybe I'm just a, a big ooh soft boy. But if the mission of your company relies on making people feel uncomfortable to speak out when they are in situations that you know, make them uncomfortable at work or when they want to see some kind of change happen in that very company that they do care about, then maybe you're not being a good leader. That's, that's how I take this, right? And I only have the information that I was able to find online. I would say that if you're a boss and your employees are saying, hey, your behavior, in my opinion, is making this company look bad and I care about this work and I care about the mission, so can you please just stop it, bro? And then he gets mad and fires them. I think it's not a good work environment if you're getting fired for speaking against your boss. I've seen people on Twitter discussing this too, and I've seen some people defending Elon Musk saying, well, yeah, obviously you get fired if you shit talk your boss. I'm not saying what he did is illegal, but I'm saying it's mean. I think that it's mean to fire your employees for shit talking you because I think people should feel comfortable giving you feedback on what is and isn't working in your company. But again, I don't know all the details, but that is what's recently happened with that. So as of the time I'm filming this, that is the information that we have on everything related to these recent controversies with Elon Musk. I'm curious what you guys all think in the comments below. Please let me know your thoughts on everything. As more developments come out, especially about this lawsuit, I will be following this and hopefully we'll be able to to do some follow-up videos about this as well. I appreciate you guys watching today. I hope you guys have a great start to your week. I'll see you tomorrow morning on Your Morning Guru and this Wednesday on this channel for another video. But in the meantime, please don't forget to support one, small businesses, and two, the LGBTQ community, LuLaRoe, Girl Boss, Boss Babe, Tupperware, and cryptocurrency. That's the only way that we will ever be truly boss babes in this universe. I love you all. Bye! Hit you some nuts. There was lots of memes going around. I'm a human. You guys um, asked for it.